Good afternoon once again. Today is Saturday, April the 25th, uh, 2020, and this is the summary translation of the daily press briefing uh, here at the Center for COVID Situation Administration, or CCSA. In the past week, we have witnessed a positive trend in the situation on COVID-19 in Thailand, with the number of new cases uh, increasing at a lower stable rate. Nevertheless, we must not be too complacent on the achievements and on, and we should keep our guard uh, high while following the practice of new normal. Otherwise, we could be attacked by the second wave of the virus. One of the notable efforts in this regard is the recent uh, distribution of masks uh, by the Ministry of Industry, uh, sending these masks uh, by mail. Um, and please be informed that there might be fraudulent uh, websites asking people to register uh, their personal details to receive masks or any other items uh, by, by the government. And those websites are, of course, not the official ones. Turning to the number of uh, cases and fatalities and recoveries and new confirmed cases, we have on screen for you now. Yes, the new confirmed cases for recorded for today is 53, making the cumulative number of cases 2,907. Total recoveries, 2,547. In that number, there is a new uh, additional recovery of 57 from yesterday. So if you look at the slide on screen, the uh, two boxes in the middle, the numbers are getting close to each other. We look forward to when these numbers will meet, meaning that the number of cumulative cases and number of recoveries and discharged uh, persons will meet, meaning, meaning that almost all of the cumulative cases, confirmed cases, have recovered or been discharged, of course, uh, minus fatalities. And on fatalities, we have one recorded fatality for today, making the accumulated number of fatalities 51. The 51st fatality, I'll give you some details on this as uh, information to be uh, mindful of the risk that still remains. The 51st fatality is a 48-year-old Thai male who was in close contact with his brother who worked in an entertainment venue. He showed symptoms since uh, April the 1st, such as coughing, fever, and head headaches, and subsequently, he suffered a high, very high fever and breathing problems and succumbed, passed away on the 24th of April because of respiratory failure. So condolences to the family of the dece deceased. The numbers that the spokesperson uh, showed today, we have some observations and um, general points on that to summarize all the different numbers and charts that uh, you, have, you saw on screen during the uh, Thai language portion. First is that the rising number of daily infected cases is due to a group of uh, persons from Songkla that tested positive after an active case finding. Uh, these groups of persons are um, actually illegal migrants uh, in Songkla, and they were test tested positive after an active case finding was conducted. So the authorities now are providing the medical treatment, of course, to the these, these persons uh, based on humanitarian con uh, considerations. Secondly is that we have uh, 12 provinces now without any new infection in the last uh, 28 days. It's good to hear that this number is expanding and increasing uh, as the, the days go by and the indicator and the benchmark that we use is now 28 days and not 14 days. Our green zone therefore is expanding. The latest addition is the provinces of Ratburi and uh, Mukdahan. The third point of observation from the information provided is that Bangkok still has the highest number of accumulated PUIs with 12,071 cases. The other provinces have a high number of PUIs include the, the provinces of Yala, Nontaburi, Shonburi, and Phuket province. So one important piece of information which the spokesperson had uh, sh showed during the briefing was about the disease-infected zones. If you recall, in March, the 
government released a list of dangerous communicable disease areas or, or, or countries. And those in the first list uh, included the Republic of Korea, China, Italy, and Iran. So now the Ministry of Public Health has added five new countries to this list of dangerous communicable disease areas, which are Malaysia, Lao PDR, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Indonesia. And this is effective on the 23rd of April. There may be questions uh, on why these countries have, uh, are on the list. Uh, they have fewer cases of uh, COVID-19 than some countries comparatively, but are added on the list of uh, dangerous communicable disease areas for, for COVID. So the rationale is that uh, particularly the countries that neighbor Thailand, um, this announcement enables the health and immigration authorities to effectively manage the movement of peoples across the borders, including by land, as well as bring them into the state quarantine process, which is very important. This announcement also seeks to facilitate the safe movement of people uh, and effectively control the disease because the sooner we are able to make sure that the risk of transmission is low, the faster that we will be able to reopen the borders on all fronts and return to business as normal. And finally, of course, the fact that the new uh, recorded uh, cases of f 42 uh, ca cases of confirmed um, infections are persons who are illegal uh, migrants uh, in the Songkla province area who contracted COVID-19. Uh, this, of course, underlines the necessity of this, of this measure to announce the uh, dangerous uh, areas because land border areas has uh, more limitations in controlling the movement of people as compared to uh, air travel. More limitations and of course more risks by land. And moving to the issue of enforcement of curfew, the numbers we have today is for those leaving the residence in terms of violating the curfew and leaving their residences, 517. We have 40 violations of curfew in terms of gathering and making the total number for yesterday recorded as 557. On the issue of the repatriation of uh, Thai nationals, today and tomorrow we have repatriation flights to bring Thai nationals back as, as we always report to you. And all returnees, of course, as you see in the yellow box on, on screen now, all returnees, mandatory, compulsory, 100% have to be quarantined according to the standard uh, procedures in state quarantine uh, facilities. And also many flights are planned for next week. So on the slide you see on screen now for today, April the 24th, can we go back to the flight uh, slide please? Yes, the flights. Um, on the, yes, on the flights uh, for today we have, as you see, from Iran and India, and for tomorrow a number from uh, Australia. Yes, next slide please. Yes, so, We also have the activities of the various embassies that we uh, show to you, the images uh, each, each time. We have, for example, um, exchange students in uh, South America, so in the AFS uh, program, uh, who would like to, of course, uh, need to return home. We have around 73 in, in South America and 52 in Argentina, and the rest in Mexico, Peru. Colombia, uh, Panama, uh, Paraguay, and Uruguay. And our embassies, of course, are working very hard to facilitate this return, while the many countries have stringent quarantine measures, and the airports are still closed for commercial flights, such as in Argentina. But meanwhile, the embassies are supplying masks, food, and other necessary items to the students. Yes, on screen you have an image. I'll start by country first. Is um, the Thai embassy in uh, Argentina, in Buenos Aires, with all um, AFS and exchange students being in close touch with the embassy in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Despite all the difficulties from the size of the country and the lockdown imposed uh, in Argentina, this includes the video conference, the first image you saw just now, to keep the students in check and. Uh, about their well-being, asking about their well-being and repatriating some students to the capital. Uh, food supplies, uh, including instant noodles, face masks, were also sent 
to the young students, as you can see on uh, the image on screen for Argentina. So moving to Peru. Yes, the image you see is uh, from the activities of the Thai Embassy in Lima, Peru, uh, repatriating Thai students, stranded uh, tourists as well, students and tourists, uh, back to Thailand through various routes, both air and land. Yes, do we have another picture on Lima? Yes, and here is the ambassador of Thailand in Lima, Peru, sending off some of these Thai citizens uh, back uh, by air. Yes. So for Mexico, our embassy in Mexico City uh, not only facilitates the repatriation of Thai nationals in Mexico, but also of nearby countries, um, and also works with uh, other embassies in the region for in this regard. Uh, for example, uh, taking the task from our embassy in Peru in repatriating trapped Thai tourists uh, back home. So from Peru, perhaps uh, transiting in Mexico City. The, the embassy also distributed face masks to the Thai community uh, via, via mail, and as you see on screen, an image also in, uh, by hand in person as well. Yes, I think that's all the images we have uh, for that set. Another cluster of information is, of course, when you have the inquiries sent to the CCSA through various uh, channels, through various websites. Um, one question that we received was, are doctors routinely testing patients undergoing surgery, uh, testing patients for COVID, and patients who are undergoing surgery for COVID? The answer is yes. Um, doctors are routinely performing these COVID checks on all patients before they undergo surgery because medical personnel performing the surgery, especially anesthetists, are under extreme risk as well as the patients. Uh, this is part of the elevated and proactive measures uh, in the COVID screening process, which the spokesperson mentioned often, we call the active case finding, being currently implemented, uh, implemented nationwide by hospitals. Of course, for the general advice, we advise you to continue to wash your hands often, always wear face masks, keep physical and social distance. For the Thai community, Thai citizens abroad, and I mentioned this yesterday and I'll repeat it once again today, our hearts go to the Thai citizens around the world, uh, in every profession, um, in every country, in every region around the world, and also including and especially the young Thai students uh, who are overseas in study programs or in exchange programs around the world. They are in the process of uploading their knowledge and their skills. So we send our hearts to them. สำหรับน้องๆนักศึกษาไทยนะครับที่อยู่ในต่างประเทศทางที่ประเทศไทยก็ขอแสดงความเป็นห่วงเป็นใยนะครับและขอให้รักษาสุขภาพนะครับทาง
all for, for the foreign community in Thailand in cooperation with the Thai citizens. Good luck, stay safe, and have a happy weekend. Good afternoon. สวัสดีครับ